Hey guys, we're back in the in the book nook. We're back in the corner. I'm just like awkwardly leaning because I know that if I go too far over this way, I'm going to get the sun in my face. I was contemplating whether I filmed this after the sun went down and had like the ring light and stuff or if I just did it before the sun went down and we had this like beautiful natural lighting going on and I decided we're going to do something different so we, we're going we're gonna to use the natural light. Anyway, you're not here for me to talk about lighting. You're here because you've seen the title of the video. I'm like actually really nervous to share about this and I don't know why. It's not like I've got anything to hide. The fact I've been making YouTube videos for six years and I have been a saved Christian gal for actually, I'm pretty sure it's three years ago, literally to the day that I got baptized. Hang on, let me fact check this. Holy Spirit, you're out here making moves. It was 2021 and it was May. No, stop. I'm going to cry. The timestamp on it is 4.52 p.m., which is seven minutes from right now. Honestly, I don't know why it has taken me so long to actually film this, which actually, hang on. No, I, I, no, that's not quite true, actually. I did share my testimony in a YouTube video. It's no longer on my channel, so don't bother looking for it. It was called My Faith Journey, and I called it that because at the time, I did not know what a testimony was, and that would have been probably like six months into my relationship with God. As a Christian, I feel like sharing your testimony is such a good way to get to know someone. Like when I meet someone new at church, it's like one of the first questions, like what do you do for work? Are you studying? Like what do you do? Where are you from? Oh, what's your testimony? I feel like that's just like such a good way to get to know somebody. I love hearing people's testimonies because they're all so unique and so different and such a beautiful illustration of how God works in so many beautiful ways. It just it makes me so happy. Not gonna lie, I have hesitated about sharing my testimony. I was actually listening to a podcast today from Ellie Yost and she was saying about how we get so numb to our own testimony and we don't really appreciate it for what it is and we kind of like, oh yeah, like my testimony is not as good as yours. But like, it's, that's not our, we're not the ones to judge that. Like God made these beautiful testimonies for us. Who are we to be like, oh, my testimony is boring. I'm sorry. Yeah. So anyway, I have I have been reluctant to share my testimony because I thought it was boring. But there's no such thing as a boring testimony, okay? I guess I should stop yapping and actually tell you what you're here to hear about. I did write a little list, like a little timeline of my testimony. But I think we're just going to let the Holy Spirit uh, take the reins and lead this little video. I feel like I'm recording a podcast. That's funny. Lead this little video where he wants it to go. Without further ado, this is my testimony. And all glory to God because I would not be sitting here right now filming this and living the beautiful life that I have without him from the top. <sighs> My testimony does start with the classic, I was born and raised in a Christian home. <laughs> and I used to be so insecure about that. But then I had this revelation that growing up in a Christian home is a blessing. It's not something to roll your eyes at. It's something that shows God's faithfulness through the generations. And that is something so beautiful. And it's something he promises in the Bible as well. That is so special to me. So yes, I was born into a Christian family and I was christened as a baby. I probably should have asked my mum how old I was when that happened. I'm assuming I was very small. I'm going to throw a number out here because I've seen photos of it, but I don't actually know how old I was. Maybe like six months maybe. I grew up going to church every Sunday because that's what you do on Sundays. You go to church and I genuinely, genuinely loved it. And it was our family. I don't want to use the word routine because that makes it sound like it was done on an obligation. It just was like a highlight of the week. We'd go to church and we'd go with another like really close family friends of ours. And then we'd go back to their house for lunch and have it like we called it Sunday lunch and it became like this quite iconic thing in our families. And to this day, every now and again, we still like go over to their house for lunch. And we're like, oh, look at Sunday lunch which is so precious normally not gonna lie we were the family that was late to church like every week and the church was very busy like you'd walk in and the pews would be like packed and they reserved the front row for the kids and it was just like a big long pew like it wasn't actual like separated seats and the there were so many kids that we would like all squeeze into the pews and like sit down and have like no space. But when we would turn up, the praise and worship would already have started. So my brother and I would like go on the front and we'd like dance around with the kids. And then after praise and worship was when the kids would go out to Sunday school. My nana was also, she'd come down to Sunday school and she she was the most incredible piano player. And so she would come down and like play piano and we'd be like, yes, Jesus loves me. Honestly, 
11 out of 10 experience. Maybe when I was around eight, my church started this thing called Icons for Girls, which was, it's kind of like a, it's also called Girls Brigade, but it's like a Christian version of Girl Guides is probably how I would explain it. And I started going to that when I was eight, because that's like when they started doing it. And it was so much fun. You'd go once a week during the school term on a Tuesday night, and you'd hang out for like an hour, hour and a half with other girls from church, and you'd do like crafts and learn how to like do life skills, like, I don't know, sewing, baking, Like, a lot of what I know, to be fair, about being a Proverbs 31 woman came from Icons for Girls. That was such a fun experience, and I actually ended up going, I went to Icons for Girls till I was, like, 15, I want to say, when I got a part-time job, which then clashed, and I couldn't be like I couldn't go because I was at work but in amongst all of that when I was I want to say like 10 our family stopped going to church I still kept going to icons for girls so at least I still had like that community of Christian girls the same age as me around me and at the time like I definitely didn't appreciate that for what it was but now being more mature and looking back I can be like actually that was such a blessing to have those sorts of friends around me by the time I was 15 I've got this part-time job I'm not going to icons I'm not going to church I have no no connection with the church with God with anything at this point I mean I might have gone to church like once or twice with my grandparents but like to get in order for me to get to church it was like a 15 minute drive it was like walking wasn't an option I kind of told myself like oh when I get my restricted license and I can take myself then I'll start going again uh spoiler alert that didn't happen. <laughs> I'm a teenager at this point, so I am super impressionable. This is actually around the time I started watching and making YouTube videos too, which is funny. But I started, at this time, I started watching a lot of YouTube and probably, actually no, I don't really know where this came from. Oh, uh, actually, mm, no, nah, it must have come from YouTube because I don't know where else it would have come from. But anyway, I started to dabble a little bit and this makes my skin crawl in like manifestation, law of attraction sort of stuff. And ah, yeah. Not my finest, not my finest moment. I'm glad to be in the position that I'm in where I can look back and I can understand that that is not of God (laughs) at all. Like 16, 17, dabbling in the law of attraction, thinking, oh my gosh, this is amazing. Um, Spoiler alert, it's not amazing. So then when I'm 17, so this is my last year of high school, I end up getting like a pretty bad injury at netball. Um, I kind of, I fell backwards on my hand and like damaged all the ligaments. Is that what they're called? I don't actually know. Don't quote me on that. Like across like the top of my hand. So where like your wrist connects to your hand. I, when I came off the court, like I couldn't move my hand. I thought it was broken. Ended up going to physio, had to like wear a splint and stuff. And it was so painful when I remember just like, and it was my was it my right hand? I think it was. So I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't write anything at school. I was going to work and I remember so my job was like going in after school and doing like the cleaning and stuff. And I remember trying to like vacuum and like trying to push the vacuum. I was like crying because it was so painful. So anyway, the accident happened. I'm getting physio. I've got my hand in a splint. And then a few days, I don't know if it was a few days or like a week later, the time period, it wasn't that long. Not gonna lie. It wasn't that long, but I still had no movement in my wrist. Like I, to do that was like, like extru- ex- a what? To do this was like excruciating. And I was at work and I was, I think I was emptying the bin. So it must have been near closing time. The shop was super quiet and someone came up to the counter to buy something. And I was like, oh yeah, like I can serve you. And so I like put the thing through the till and the lady saw my hand in a splint and she goes, are you, like, are you injured? I was like, yeah, so I can't really move my wrist. Like, yes, yeah, slay. And she goes, oh, can I pray for you? And I was like, yeah and she goes do you mind if I lay hands on you and at the time I was like what what does this lady want to do to me but now I know like it's fine guys laying hands is good kind of like came around to the side of the counter to her and she like laid hands and prayed for me and as she was praying I just started sobbing like tears like snotty nose sobbing and it was a relatively long prayer I would say it probably went for like you know a minute or so and so I'm just there like head down sobbing tears like dripping on the floor essentially when she finishes her prayer I kind of look at her and obviously like I'm a bit of a mess. And she goes, I think she, I don't know if she felt bad or whatever. But anyway, I just remember looking at her and then like going, I couldn't, actually that's right. I couldn't squeeze my hand. I remember looking at her and I was just like, I can squeeze my hand. I didn't say anything, but I was like, oh my gosh, this lady, her prayer has just healed me. I don't even, I don't know what words were exchanged after it happened. It was such a blur. And then all of a sudden she's gone. She literally gone. She walked out, didn't see where she went, didn't see who she was. She's gone, vanished, disappeared. It was the miracle of healing in that moment, I was like, yo, this prayer stuff, like, it's legit. So I think that was something that definitely opened my eyes. And I was like, okay, I've been born and raised 
to believe in this stuff, but I don't know anything about it because when I learned about it, I was a child and now I'm an, I'm nearing an, being an adult. But anyway, I was healed and um, I kind of forgot about it, not going to lie. Then I finished high school and I moved to uni and I don't know if there was something subconscious in me that was like, I'm away from home, I'm independent, I'm 18, no, I was 17, I was still 17 at this point. I'm 17, like the world's my oyster basically. I remember having like a thought being like, oh yep, it would be cool to start going to church again. Don't know where that thought came from, genuinely don't know. Uh, We're just going to put it down to the Holy Spirit because who knows that's my thought process I move into uni and I was on a no alcohol floor because I I didn't drink alcohol I still don't drink alcohol but being on that floor was actually such a blessing because I was surrounded by so many lovely Christian people one of them being my beautiful now best friend Rachel Masters who ended up moving into so she moved into the room right next door to me and moving in we didn't obviously didn't know each other because she was from Tauranga and I was from Auckland we move in and we kind of since we're neighbors we kind of just like end up being friends because we're right next door to each other and we're going to dinner on the literal first night in the halls and she came came and knocked on my door and said oh like do you want to come to dinner with me I was like yeah I'll come to dinner she's just like holding the door and I'm like turning around to put my shoes on and I stand up and she looks me dead in the eyes and she goes are you a Christian and I kind of looked at her and I was like ah uh, mm, yeah <laughs> like I genuinely did not know how to answer the question because I'm like Y- yes but no but like yeah but kind of keen but also I don't know but I just said yes and she's like oh cool and like that was kind of like the end of it we went to dinner whatever it was great like a week later I think there were like nine of us on the f- or nine people on the floor that were going to church because there was a church on campus at university which was insane so cool Rachel's like oh yeah like some of us are like gonna go over to church tonight did you want to come with us like it's gonna be super chill and I was like yeah like yeah I'll come and then I was like what do I wear like what do you wear to church the last time I went to church I was 10 when I went to church last time I was buying my clothes from TNT I'm 17 what do I wear to church she's like honestly it doesn't matter what you wear like you just just turn up and I was like well okay that seems really chill but okay so I turned up in uh if you're an OG I turned up in my striped make someone smile t-shirt and some black shorts I don't know why I remember that so vividly but I do pretty sure I was wearing Birkenstocks so we all march in uh in convoy over to the other side of campus to church and we walk in the door and immediately there's like the welcome team which I, I now know they're the welcome team I just thought there were people just lingering now that I look, <laughs> look back but we walk in and we meet a lovely girl called Sam who I'm now still friends with she's amazing walking a little bit further we meet Will who was was is the like youth young adults pastor and I get talking to him and he's like oh like, where are you from because obviously they knew we were new students I was like oh I'm from this place in Auckland which I don't want to say because privacy and he's like oh my gosh no way like I'm from there too like I went to school there and I was like no way like the world is like the small and so that was a really cool connection like straight off the bat and then also met another amazing girl called Kahu who she's amazing and all this just like collectively all these people all of a sudden I'm like what the heck none of these people know me and they're all making me feel so loved so welcome like they want me to be here like they genuinely care about me they genuinely want to know about me like this is amazing went into the service service was great praise and worship was elite so good and the message was amazing into the service as they do at any service I now know that this is I thought this was just like when I first went I was like oh this is they're doing this just for me no you know they, they do it every week that everyone everyone gets a chance they did the salvation appeal so you raise your hand they pray for you it's beautiful and I was like standing there and they're like all right three two one raise your hands at this point no one's looking like everyone's looking down their eyes are shut like no one's gonna see you and I was like mm, nah nah it's all right uh, nah nah it's all good nah uh, mm, nah I don't want anyone to see me nah I'm not drawing attention to myself and then my heart just started to like beat really fast and I was like oh but what if I miss this opportunity up the arm goes prayer was prayed and that was the day that I gave my heart to Jesus honestly haven't looked back that was my first proper like I'm going to church church experience long story short that church ended up becoming so I don't even know how to explain it and the time and the season where I was moving to Hamilton it was a new city I didn't know anyone all of my like pretty much all of my friends were made through church and to this day I, I'm so, oh, I just love them so much God is just so good hi editing Emma here I just realized I missed like a really foundational part of this whole testimony so I'm just gonna insert it here because I feel like this is kind of like the right place for it but what I failed to mention is honestly right throughout my childhood but especially during like high school like definitely like year 13 I think was probably when it peaked I struggled a lot with my mental health a lot of anxiety and depression and it was not a good time 
time. It was not a good time. Moving away from home, I think that was, it was terrifying because it was like, new environment but I think at the same time it was also encouraging that it was a new environment. Coming into 2020, coming into university, had a bit of baggage that I was carrying with me in terms of my mental health. It was, it was hard, like it was really hard. It wasn't just like after one church service that I was like you know set free from the chains of my anxiety but that is a huge part of part of my testimony is that God has delivered me from all of these thoughts and feelings that held me captive and all these lies from the enemy that consumed me, honestly consumed me. That is a huge, a huge, huge, huge part of yeah, the work that God has done in my life and I feel like I would have been I would be doing God a disservice if I failed to mention that. So back to regular programming. We're still in 2020. So that's the start of 2020. Give my heart to Jesus and the salvation appeal. And then four weeks later, lockdown happens. So I'm moving back to Auckland again and there's no church for like a couple months there is online church which is great so every week I'm there I'm watching online church like this is the most revolutionary thing that I've ever seen in my life I'm sharing it on my story I'm letting everyone know that they can also watch church online and it was just such a good time I had no fear I was like guys you you need to get on this this is the best thing ever which I still stand by that just saying lockdown would have been the prime opportunity for me to just like fall off be like oh nah church online no thanks but no I was so persistent and consistent in turning up every Sunday when I came back to Hamilton after lockdown hit the ground running man hit the ground running I was so excited to be back so excited to see all my friends from church so excited to be back in the house to be praising and worshiping in person that was such a good time so that was basically like pretty much the gist of 2020 probably the start of 2021 uni's coming back I came home for the summer I'm going back to Hamilton for the uni year and I started doing a little bit of serving in like the young adults youth kind of space and that was so much fun and I was like wow I love how these people are just so like selfless at giving up their time just because they want to help other people. I was like, this is, like, these are the sort of people that I want to be around. Then May 2021, which as we've discovered, um, was exactly, probably actually exactly four years ago to the minute I was uh, getting dunked under the water. Who thought it would have taken me four, no, three years, three years ago. Oh my gosh, who would have thought it would take me three years to share my testimony? So May 9th, 2021, I... Well, actually, I made the decision a few weeks prior because there's a little bit of organisation that goes into being baptised. I made the decision to be baptised. It was just a church. They have like a pop-up, like hot tub thingy that they put you in. It's actually really nice. It was nice and warm. And I got baptised, which was so beautiful. It was actually Mother's Day, which was so special. My family came down from Auckland and my nana came as well. We had some other like relatives who were in Hamilton that came along to support me too. And all my friends were there and it was just so beautiful. End of 2022, I finished uni and moved back to Auckland. And leaving behind the church family that are of the church I was going to, was so hard to the point that I, especially last year, considered molt on multiple occasions moving back just to be back in that church community, but that ship has sailed. Moving back to Auckland and being like taken away from that church family was honestly, it was, it was so deep, like it was heartbreaking because I was like, these are my people, like I've just spent three years surrounded by these people they're amazing I love them so much and now I'm just I have to start again like I don't want to do that my process of finding a church in Hamilton was so straightforward I just went and it was great and I kept going whereas in Auckland I had to go to so many different churches to find one that felt like home thankfully I have now and it's great and I love it so much but yeah that was definitely a bit of a process for the first like probably six months of being back in Auckland Apart from like my friends who were in Hamilton who I was keeping in touch with, I didn't have anyone, like I didn't have like a life group or a connect group where I had a community around me of people that I could do life with, which was so hard. Like looking back now, that was so hard. But I think it, in a sense, like the, I don't know if I, oh, I guess you could call it isolation of that really made me lean into God. And I think that was actually a really foundational part of my faith as well was just having that time to be like all right God it's just me and you now I'm in a church community I'm in a new connect group the girls are so, oh my gosh top tier I guess that brings me to where I am today so God has been faithful he has been good genuinely can't put into words how grateful I am for this journey like it hasn't been perfect but 
gosh, it's been good. And it's so crazy just to look at the past like four and a half years or even like I mean, my whole life, but look at it and be like, wow, like God has been so faithful and seeing how far he's brought me through different, like obviously I can't go into detail on all of like the little trials that I've been through over the past four and a half years because we'd be here all day. Just seeing his faithfulness through all of that and being like, that's only like, that's only four and a half years of my life. Like what more has he got up his sleeve? Like this is exciting. Like bring it. I'm just so... I'm literally speechless literally speechless that is my testimony that is my story that is how I've come to be the person that I am today that is my journey God is good God is so good I hope that kind of I don't know I love hearing other people's testimonies I feel like it just helps you to understand who they are as a person so much more and it's crazy because obviously the Bible is full of testimonies right like imagine Imagine the size of the Bible if it had everyone's testimony in it. Imagine. God just doesn't stop. He does not stop. And I love it. Thank you guys so much for listening to me. Yep. I've actually been recording for 35 minutes, but this video is definitely not going to be 35 minutes long. There's a lot of uh, trimming that needs to take place. Stay safe. Stay well. Make someone smile. Jesus loves you. And I will see you in my next video. <laughs>